Hey everyone, you're listening to Ankur Variku on Voice with Variku. On this podcast, I talk to you about entrepreneurship, how to grow in life, manage personal finances, handle failures, and a lot more things that just come to my mind. The episode begins. So last week, my team and I, we were meeting for our quarterly offsite because all of us work remotely. Every three months, we gather for an offsite and everyone comes to one place and we spend some time together. So this week we had gone to Pondicherry for, for five days and it was lovely. It was a wonderful meeting. So many people, they were two new team members in the team. So they were meeting others for the first time and it was just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And one of these lunches that we were having on one of those days, one of the team members asked me, since you are self-aware, or at least it seems like you're self-aware, do you also suffer from imposter syndrome? And my answer was yes. Absolutely yes. I suffer from imposter syndrome almost every day of my life. And and there was someone else then who asked me, like, when do you feel it? I was like, it isn't a moment. It isn't something that I do that makes me feel like that. I just feel like an imposter perpetually. And I wanted to talk about that because I often get emails and messages from people talking about the imposter syndrome and struggling to deal with it. And I want to break it up for everyone so that they can see it the same way that I do, which has, uh, frankly, in my experience, helped me a lot. Number one, what is imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is basically this perpetual feeling or this feeling, not necessarily perpetual, but this feeling that you are an imposter. Who is an imposter? An imposter is someone who's faking it. Somebody who isn't what he or she claims they are, but they're putting up a facade, they're putting up a farce, and then trying to get past that in front of people. So imagine if you don't know anything, but you pretend to know everything, or you're not rich, but you pretend to be rich, or you are not friendly, but you pretend to be friendly, or, or you're not courageous, but you pretend to be courageous. In all those occasions, you're acting as an imposter. And the syndrome is that you feel like an imposter. You feel like you are shallow. You feel like you don't know much. And one day that will be uncovered and the world will come to know that you were a fake all this while. An imposter syndrome is often in popular culture spoken about both positively and negatively. Positively, because there are enough people who say, hey, fake it till you make it. You have to be an imposter. You have to pretend that you you know everything because that's the only way that you're only going to get any opportunity or, or even a seat at the table, so as to speak. So they encourage the imposter syndrome because that in some way is allowing you to step into the shoes of something that you aren't yet ready for, but you know that you can fail sometime in the future. And negatively, because it can be paralyzing. If you're constantly thinking like an imposter or feeling like an imposter, then it can be damaging because you you, you just feel like it, it's just going to surface one day. The world is going to know the truth and, and that day, game's over. Everything that you have worked towards is going to be finished. And I feel both of these are, are not the right emotions in my experience I don't believe in fake it till you make it. That's not who I am as an individual. At the same time, I wouldn't want anything to be paralyzing because then that destroys the very essence of why I would want to do something in the first place. So I need to find something that helps me. And, And here is what helps me. What helps me is the realization that whenever you do something new, whenever you pick up something new, you are by definition a beginner. You are by definition a rookie. You are by definition amateur. And you are going to make mistakes. You are going to fail. You are going to fall. That's inevitable. It is absolutely inevitable. And if you're doing it in a manner that the world knows that you're starting, what you essentially do is you buy time. You even buy patience. You even buy acknowledgement. What do I mean by that? Two years back, when I stepped down as the CEO of Nearby and I started my content journey, whether creating on YouTube or on LinkedIn or on Instagram or wherever else, or for that matter, this podcast or writing a newsletter, it was very clear and I made sure that the world knew that I was starting up. 
I was starting as a novice. I was starting as a big nerd. I was starting as an amateur. So I had to make mistakes or I was bound to make mistakes in the journey of content creation. What I couldn't make a mistake on is the content that I was speaking about because that, at least in people's mind, came from a point of experience. I had 10 years of experience as an entrepreneur, almost 13, 14 years of experience as a working professional. So there was bound to be something that was reflecting in my conversation to show that I had this experience. So that is something that I had to make sure I got right. But my journey as a content creator, whether I was doing my YouTube videos the right way or whether I was using Instagram the right way or whether I was using LinkedIn the right way, all of those were things that were necessarily going to be that I learned along the way. They wouldn't be something that I was born with on day one. When I make myself realize that, and I also show to the world that that is indeed the case, my imposter syndrome, as active as it is, helps me because I know that the world knows of me as a novice. They know that I'm trying hard. I know that I am trying hard. I know that I am ready to bear these mistakes and reflect upon them to make me better. And that helps me deal with my imposter syndrome. It helps me with the realization that when Ever you start, you are bound to fail. You are, by definition, going to be an amateur, a beginner. And if you were to take those steps to become better and better and better, while continuing to reach higher and higher and higher, what's going to happen is that you will never, ever reach a point of expertise because you're always learning something that's new, something that you don't know, something that someone else does better than you. And all of those moments are going to make you feel like an imposter, going to make you feel like you're not ready, that you're doing something which isn't yet you. But that is the truth. And that's also something that people recognize in you. When I operate this way, it liberates me. Whenever I am the first one to admit that I'm going to make a mistake. Whenever I'm the first one to call out my mistakes, whenever I'm the first one to share my failures, whenever I'm the first one to own up to the fact that I know nothing and I know that I don't know anything and I have to set myself up on this journey to know a lot more than what I do today, it liberates me. I still feel like an imposter. I still feel like an amateur. I still feel like a beginner every single waking second of my life. But then imposter syndrome is consistently driving me forward. And I hope if you were to see it this way in your own self, you will also be able to deal with it in a way that I could. All the best. Thank you for listening to this episode of Voice with Variku. To be notified of upcoming episodes, be sure to subscribe and follow the show on this app right now. Also, don't forget to rate and review the show because that just feels nice. Thank you. <laughs>